Hey, welcome to a new set of tutorials which are about the new dynamic variable system which has been recently added to Neos. This was added uh, quite recently during the sort of month of the MMC it was finalized and uh, now people can finally use it. It is fantastic but it's also quite complicated which is why this is a series. There's a lot to go over here and you might get overwhelmed and that's why I'm going to break it down into video uh, parts. The parts might be long but I'm just trying to explain things as best as possible. So we're going to get started and I'm going to start by explaining what dynamic variables are. Unlike other tutorials where I may build something and show you how it works, I need to actually start with a bit of theory. And so we're going to start with some visual aids, which I have behind me, just to show you sort of how they work and talk about them. And then we'll build some examples and talk about how you can use them in subsequent parts. Let's get going. If you have any questions whilst we're doing this about dynamic variables or anything like that, please do let me know. This system is very new. Everyone's learning it together. And that includes the NEOS team because... Um, Making a system in the, the, the code for Neos isn't the same as using it in-game. So we're all learning it together, so feel free to ask any questions that you have. I'm going to start here by uh, spawning out the tools that we're going to need. Contrary to um, what other people might say, I actually recommend that you don't start using the uh, logics nodes for dynamic variables. Dynamic variables have both components and logics nodes to be used, and like I've said before, logics nodes and uh, components are basically the same thing, but it depends on how you use them. I recommend that when you're learning dynamic variables, you start with the components as they kind of teach you the nature and some of the sort of terminology points and how to use them effectively, etc. Whereas the logics nodes themselves can in some cases lead to bad behaviors which i don't actually recommend you're free to do whatever you'd like you can skip through to later videos in the series if they already exist if not wait for them they'll be in the tutorials channel when they exist that talk about the logics nodes if that's more your jam let's get going with some theory though so i'm going to start here by turning on my visual aids here and talk about what dynamic variables are uh, from a sort of you know 10,000 foot view so from a 10,000 foot view dynamic variables are basically a book or a database or an Excel spreadsheet, whatever sort of analogy fits for you, uh, of uh, named variables. Um, and so here I have two spaces. These are just visual aids, but two spaces set up. As you can see, I have space one or book one, database one, whatever you like, and it has size three, lights four, color blue, name Bob. And to its right, I have space two, which has size five, lights four, color red, name Charles. So you can see here that I have two spaces or two books, and they have different values for each of the named variables in them. Now, the good thing about dynamic variables is that I can create these named variables and access them as though they were the same space. Um, and anything within a space will inherit and be able to access the values that are in the space that it's operating within. So as an example here, I want to talk about sort of what things you might put into a dynamic variable space. So you might put, say, an avatar or a user. So I have a user here. And say if I put this user into space one, it would then have name Bob, it would turn blue, it would be three in the size, and it would have four lights. I could then move it to space two, and it would have size five, lights four, color red, and be named Charles instead. When I say move, what I mean here is parenting. Everything is based on a parenting structure. So if you think about this world, it has a room. The room might have a variable space, and anything inside the room will gain access to that variable space. So in this case, the frame is my space, is a visual aid. So when I move things between spaces, I am just reparenting them. I'm not actually, it's just a visual aid, but I hope that makes the thing. This applies not only to avatars and users, but it also applies to things like objects. So I've got a cube here, which represents my object. It's a poor man's object, I know, but uh, it works as an example. So imagine that this was a gun, a power-up, a PDA, a computer, a gadget, a tool, a fishing rod, anything like that. I can move it again between spaces and it can inherit different values. So say, for example, um, I put the, the uh, gun on space one, it would be a blue gun. If I put the gun in space two, you'll see it's a red gun. For those that have checked out my MSC entry, I'll put a video link in the video description. You'll notice some sort of similarities going on here. And that's actually what's happening. In my MMC submission, I use spaces to form the teams in the game. We have a pink team and a blue team, and those are two dynamic variable spaces. And the data below them that's stored in dynamic uh, variables allows me to change the color of the gun. So you notice that the guns on the pink side are pink and the guns on the blue side are blue. That's all powered by dynamic variables. To that end, here's my other representation, which is kind of a game system. I know it's just a capsule, but like that's used in a lot of games. If a player is playing a game, you might have a game variable space, which talks about the game. Like what level is the game on? What round is the game on? How, what's the score of the user that's playing the game? 
You can also put variables on um, objects themselves as well. So the, the avatar here might have a dynamic variable space on it, and then it might have dynamic variables underneath it, such as, I don't know, height or hunger or something like that that you might want to monitor if you're making a game. There are some standard variable spaces that exist that you can use. I'm going to talk about them more in another video though. Let's get going. I'm going to show you a functional example of how dynamic variables work on page two here. What I have here is I have three dynamic variable spaces. They are the blue, red, and green dynamic variable spaces, and they're not doing anything as they are right now. But uh, if I go ahead and place this black cube inside the blue dynamic variable space, you'll see that the black cube turns blue. I can move it to the red dynamic variable space and you'll see it turns red. And I can move it to the green dynamic variable space and you'll see it turns green. There is no, and I mean literally no, logics happening between this interaction. Everything that you see here is happening with dynamic variables and one exception to that, which is the grabbable parenter component. The grabbable parenter component just parents the cube to the sphere in this case, when it is within the spheres collider. So when I put it inside the sphere, it gets parented to the sphere and the sphere has a dynamic variable space on it, which creates the uh, uh, linkage for the cube up to the dynamic variable space, which has the value of blue. To demonstrate this, we're actually going to recreate as quickly as possible um, the um, setup that you just saw here using this blank example. I'm going to publish this world after the tutorial is done so you can have a look around it. Um, do let me know again if you have any questions, and if I move too fast, let me know. Give me some feedback. So what we're going to do here is we're going to access this uh, setup which is on the table here. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and inspect the cube. The sphere itself doesn't have colliders on it due to the way that we're going to set it up. So I'm secondary pushing on the cube, I'm going to open the inspector here, and I'm going to go up one. So what you'll see here is you'll see that there is a sphere, and this is where we're going to create our dynamic variable space, our book, our database. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to attach component, data, dynamic, and then dynamic variable space. I mentioned before, but you can name spaces and you can also turn on this only direct binding. We're going to cover that later on because it's a little bit more of an advanced context. You can use dynamic variables without specifying either of these quite well, and they actually didn't used to exist when uh, dynamic variable spaces first came out. So we're going to continue as though they don't exist, but trust me, I will explain them later. Now underneath this, what we're going to do is we're going to create the color variable, which determines what color the sphere will be, sorry, not the cube, the sphere, the cube will be when we put it into that dynamic variable space. To do that, we're going to attach another component, which is in data, dynamic, and then we're going to use dynamic value variable. There are a lot of components here, and I'll go over them at a different time. Just follow the uh, follow along with the steps I'm, I'm, I'm prescribing, and if you have any questions, do let me know. Feel free to exceed the bounds of the tutorial and play around, but for now, dynamic value variable. Dynamic value variables allow you to specify a type that you're storing. In this case, we want to store the color type. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom where it says dynamic value variable color, and we're going to trigger on that. And you'll see that we've now created a dynamic value variable of the type color. We're going to now name this dynamic variable. Like you saw on page one of my visual aids, we had size, color, lights, etc. So we're going to name our dynamic variable color, and we're going to set it to pink. Now it's set to pink. Actually, we need to set the transparency to full as well. There we go. Now we've got a full pink square. Now that we've got that set up, all we need to do is set up the cube so that it responds to the dynamic variable space. To do this, we need to create the parenting setup that I talked about. This uses a component called the grabbable parenter. I have a video on that separately, which I'll link in the video description, but we're going to set one up really quickly right now. So we go to attach component, transform, interaction, grabbable parenter. And then all we need to do here on the grabble parenter is drag the sphere from the top here and put it into the parent under property. That's the dynamic variable um, sphere setup. When I put this cube next to the sphere, you'll see that the cube is now parented to the sphere, which means it's inside the dynamic variable space here for the sphere. I'm now going to make the cube here listen to the dynamic variable by changing its color. To do that, we actually need to create a material that the box has access to. Uh, we're going to be following um, similar guidance to another video, which I'll link in the video description, which talks about how to put logics on materials and where to put materials when you're doing logics, which is basically store the material on the object if you want to do that. So we're going to do that again here. So I've got the box selected, and I'm going to go ahead here and hit the star. Underneath that, we've now got a new child called box-child. I'm going to rename that to box-material and I'm going to attach a material to it. So attach component, assets, 
materials, unlit, and then unlit. We're using unlit just because it's it's simple. Now unlit has a color property on it, and we can actually leave that alone, but that's the property that we're going to be using. We're now going to use a different dynamic variable component. We're going to be using dynamic value variable driver. You can find that in attach component data dynamic dynamic value variable driver t and then again scroll down to the bottom and do color like i said previously we will go over all of these variable um, components later but for now just use the ones that i'm using here so we're going to type color in here which will uh, register the dynamic value variable driver color as listening to the variable name color now dynamic value variable driver will drive another field of the same type of its type to the value of that dynamic variable. So it's asking here for a target, and that target is what, what do we want to drive to the color of that dynamic variable? So in this case, tint color is going to be dragged and grabbed and dropped into target. Now you'll see that the material up here has already gone to pink. If I go ahead and I grab unlit material here, we'll see that we've got the sphere. I can then go back to the box and I can replace its material with this unlit material. So now you'll see that the box is pink. Now, when I go up to the sphere here, I can change the dynamic value variable color here. And the box will just automatically change. And again, we're not using any logics here. It's just changing using dynamic variables. To illustrate this further, we can actually go ahead and duplicate this sphere. So now we have two spheres. I'm just going to select the second one here and move it across. We've also got two cubes. And what I'm going to do on the second sphere here is I'm going to change the color back to pink and now you'll see what we've got is we've got a sphere with a blue cube in it and a pink cube in it. If I put the pink cube into this sphere you'll see it turns blue and if I put the blue sphere uh, cube into this sphere you'll see it turns pink. Let's scroll back a page and you'll see that we're back to the um, blue, red and green setup that I had before. If you inspect these you'll see pretty much the same setup we did um, just now in the video and again here the exact thing, same thing's happening here. We're just using a grabbable parenter to move them between the variable spaces. So there you go. That's dynamic variable spaces from a uh, beginner sort of 10,000 foot view. There is a lot more to cover here, but we're going to cut the video here as it's already quite long. Join me next time on dynamic variables for more information such as other data types, using them in conjunction with UI and other more advanced concepts like logics and uh, stuff like that. I hope this makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.